believe we're about to get into game. We spoke about it earlier. We've seen a, a bunch of Blastoise since we asked for Blastoise. We have. I feel like you kind of spoke that into existence a little bit, but also I believe that Blastoise, again, is one of those meta picks that really was kind of expected to make more of an appearance here at this particular event. But let's go ahead and kick off this game number one of round nine of Swiss, where Yuri will be leading with the Solgaleo as well as the Thunderous. And also on David's side, we've got the Thunderous and the Shadow Rider Calyrex. And the Thunderous coming to the fore here uh, being very, very important. And, and Maybe the Thunderous are being played a little bit differently, and that's what they serve a different purpose in the lead for. Uh, that's where it's certainly going to get interesting, but right off the bat, a Dynamax for David. Yeah. Big Dynamax coming through. It will be that Thunderous. Uh, the Thunderous can, can sit on the field and do so much work as well if it's Defiant. It's just able to, to eat those attacks up and maybe waiting to see something like that Incineroar come in. Uh, but the Incineroar is not on the field yet, so the Thunderous needs a little bit of help. That said, it's a matching Dynamax from the uh, side of Yuri. I have to imagine he's going to be leaning on something a little bit different, though, when it comes down to yeah. Yeah, the Dynamax of the Sol Galeo. Big Dynamax is to kick off this very first turn. Sogaleo, been a very big centerpiece for this particular composition. Oh. But a fast Will-O-Wisp coming out from David will burn this Sogaleo. And a Max Lightning from David Thunderous gonna be taking that Thunderous on Yuri's side super, super low, if not just knocking it out. No, it's gonna hang on here for that brutal swing. So at least the burn does get mitigated a little bit by this weakness policy being activated. Yeah, but it's still a damage output lower than you would expect out of your Sol Galeo. People are so used to this Sol Galeo just being able to activate weakness policy and go absolutely crazy. Yes, the Calyrex does get knocked out, but, you know, oh, it's a critical hit as well. The defense boosts are coming through. That may be the answer the Sol Galeo needs. You know, use the weakness policy to mitigate the burn and the effect on your attack there, but then set up your defenses and just really sit on the field for a number of turns. That said, the Thunderous is definitely causing a bit of a problem over on David's side and is going to be able to start throwing down these big attacks uh, whenever they're required. David now revealing the Zacian as the third Pokemon that he brought to this game. And Thunderous for Yuri, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty low here and so maybe you have to go for something if you want to find value, something that is going to be Pranks are activated if, if maybe that's what you have, but can also just be defiant. Uh, the, I think they're going to be different abilities here based on the team composition. So David looking more at that defiant option, um, being able to, you know, take some of these and, and just turn those into huge boosts. You know, when you're playing something like Matt's Knuckle, Defiant is definitely a much more common build there as well, but, you know, Yuri needs to be setting up some of that support and helping out using that move that we just saw, the scary phase. That's going to be the prankster variety, and it's a tale of two Thunderous now. The Solgaleo, though, in the face of a Thunderous, setting up rather nicely, being able to get these max steel spikes down, boosting its defense. Yes, the output is not exactly where he wants it to be, but it's still going to be getting those defense boosts. And as we saw way back, if you cast your mind back to round number one, once it sets those boosts up, it's an absolute handful to deal with. It's really difficult to remove, whether it's the max quake boost, the max steel spike boosts. It's going to be very, very tough if you don't have the damage output to really be able to deal with that. But take a look at this. You're going to send out the Incineroar despite mm -hmm. recognizing that this Thunder is, is built in such a way that the Defiant is going to be the more viable ability for this Thunderous, and so handing over Defiant Boost. That's tough. This Thunderous could start running away with the game here, particularly because it just has this speed advantage. Um, I don't see many clear-cut answers, particularly the last turn of Dynamax, where Incineroar can't even give it a fake-out to buy a little bit of time. I think if this Thunderous lands a, a big attack in this following turn, then things could start to get a little bit dicey. But no fake-out, and I'm going to try to stop that. The Incineroar taking a whole lot of damage there. 
Yeah, that's going to be a lot of damage into that Incineroar, and then Incineroar is just going to get knocked out here, but this might be a good enough trade if Yuri is able to knock out this Thunderous as well. That's Max Steel Spike, though, providing over a defense boost, mm -hmm. which will be able to help against the Solgaleo, as the Solgaleo now goes for a Max Steel Spike of its own, but this time into the Zacian, bringing it to about half health. Yeah, that defense boost, though, helping both the Pokemon out, not just the Thunderous that threw out that Max Steel Spike, but that Zacian as well. I feel like David's just not concerned about this Solgaleo right now. Knows it's burned, says, you know what? You're about to run out of Dynamax. I'm going to be able to, to deal with the rest of your team another way. And, you know, this Groudon coming in, setting up the Drought, still going to be a little bit slower. This Solgaleo may have to look at what we saw from earlier, some of our team builds earlier, a little late-game trick room. I think that's the way that Yuri has to play this one. And maybe that's why he was just leaving it on the field during those turns where it wasn't getting the damage out. Yeah, I mean, now that Groudon is on the field, I do feel like it's going to be pressuring quite a bit of that physical attack. But the max steel spike boost, once again, from that Thunder, so I think you're going to pose a bit of a problem. But... We're going to see the Zacian now go for a Behemoth Blade into the Groudon, recognizing that is going to be the bigger threat because that Solgaleo is burned, but also Brick Break getting revealed okay. as what is the base of that Max Knuckle. Fire back, though, of a Rock Slide as Solgaleo does go for the Trick Room, and based on the turn order that we saw in that previous turn that's really going to play into Yuri's favor. Yep, he needs to get a big amount of... I mean, he's going to be able to, to take out one of these Pokemon, I think, guaranteed, um, if not both. Of course, David does have one more Pokemon remaining, and that could entirely mix things up, depending on what it is in the back, and, and this could be the turn to, to maybe switch. I like the Protect here. Just scout out what's going on and see what work you've got to do. But Groudon, you know, in a great position to take knockouts on either of these Pokemon right now. Yeah, the Rock Slide is going to connect onto the Thunderous, and now the Sun Steel Strike as well. Unfortunately, mm. going into the Zacian Protect, but the oh, Thunderous is no. here from the Rock Slide. Uh, David, able, not able to move there, made the right play, kept the Zacian protected, didn't take any damage from the Rock Slide, and ate up that Sun Steel Strike. The Thunderous looking to fire back, I imagine, into the Groudon with something like that Brick Break, but not able to do so. A big flinch for Rock Slide there for Yuri, and he's got to be feeling pretty good about that one. He's now going into the same turn, you know, same turn order, just with no protect on the Zacian, and of course, Thunderous really, really low on health. So, probably feeling pretty good about this one. I do think that flinch has helped him out a whole lot, though, because the Groudon could have been taken down, and of course, that rock side threat would have been gone with it. Yeah, I mean, it had to hit sometime. So at least, you know, the Rock Slide, it did connect that time. Maybe just a little bit of kind of evening up the scales here. But Rock Groudon does connect to both with the Rock Slide. And mm -hmm. Thunderous will get knocked out, which leaves that Zacian open for an attack coming through from the Solgaleo. This time with the Earthquake, though, knowing that, hey, Groudon just very well could be knocked Ooh. out here. But the Zacian does not go down. The Zacian takes it. Don't forget about that earlier boost from the Max Steel Spike. This Solgaleo, though, is going to be uh, taking that hit very nicely. This, uh, you know, still a problematic Pokemon to deal with. Uh, but, of course, it's now one Pokemon remaining, the Incineroar coming in. Uh, it looked like Yuri was getting right back into the game, but I think this Incineroar might be able to, to put a bit of a stop to that one, um, especially if it just wants to buy turns with Fake Out. Those turns all come with a little bit of chip burn damage as well, and there it is, throwing in the towel for Yuri. Go to game two, gotta bounce back if you wanna stay in this tournament. Yes, but I think some really good adjustments can definitely come through. Uh, I mean, that was so close, and I, that Rock Slide could have gone differently for the first time that it got thrown out, and yeah, it was it was a tough one. I mean, it was a real tough beat for for Yuri to you know come that close. I think if you take out the the threat of the Zacian nice and early on, if you take it out with that earthquake, then that trade is fine, right? You, yeah. you know, trading a Groudon is absolutely fine because then you're just Solgaleo with boosts. Bear in mind against the the Incineroar. And that's a whole lot closer. That's a very different 
ball game because you can start earthquaking it, you know, and, and I don't know how much damage the Incineroar would have been able to do with flare blitzes and stuff. Yes, obviously the burn damage was sticking there, but it would have been a whole different game if you didn't take that Sacred Sword damage the turn before. So really tough for Yuri there, but he did play to every single out. Really well played by David, though. I think he put himself in a great position early doors. I think throwing out that Thunderous, getting those Defiant boosts was, was absolutely huge for him and, and showed a very big difference. Getting that burn down early, too, really big at slowing down that Sol Galeo. And that's a move that some people have been sacrificing on their, you know, on their Shadow Rider Calyrex. When we were originally playing the game with Spectria, it was a kind of a staple at that point, but now it's been slipping by the wayside a little bit. We've been seeing some, some different builds. This shows why maybe you have to consider it as a team building choice in uh, the continued kind of future. Well, Solgaleo is going to start to become more popular as well. That's kind of the only thing that you can really do to stop that damage unless you want to play a bit more of a defensive game. Like we did see those max steel spike boosts come through as well. But that Will-O-Wisp, if it can hit, can be a pretty surefire way to deal with that. But let's head into game number two here, where David is leading the series 1-0. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be similar to the first game. Looking for the run back of game number one as these trainers line up with the same leads. But will they play it the same is the question. The Solgaleo now, of course, knows about the threat of that will -O hitting there. So maybe a switch into something that could take it a little bit nicer, say, an Incineroar might be an option, uh, or something that just doesn't care about the burn and, and only would get annoyed by the residual damage. So, certainly options to change it up for Yuri. He doesn't want to throw the crowd on in and let it take it that either. Doesn't look like we're getting any switches though, and maybe Yuri thinks the first couple of turns weren't the problem, looking down the line a little bit to find a solution in there. Wow, oh, David's oh. going ahead and <laughs> time no to shout. That whole point is null and void now. Yeah, that, that is not the Thunderous. That is the Shadow Rider Calyrex getting the Dynamax Factor on David's side. But also, Yuri may be calling this correctly, not having to worry about the Will-O-Wisp mm -hmm. anymore. And just going to go for the Dynamax on the Sogaleo as well. This opens up a whole new ball game when it comes down to how this game two can play out. Oh yeah, this is a very different turn one. Just in that one change of Dynamax from David and giving up the Will-O-Wisp. Uh, that said, though, it, the Shadow Rider Calyrex still gets to fire off Max Phantasm, and it still does a huge heaping of damage. Yeah, that's going to be a big amount of damage. That Thunder is also going to be dropping its defense, but also David doesn't have to worry about that drop. It's not a defiant Thunderous, mm -hmm. but Thunderous still able to use that brutal swing. Not nearly as effective anymore, though, as, yes, you get the weakness policy boost <laughs> and that's a lot of damage going that Solgaleo's way. Yeah, but look how much this Solgaleo is going to be able to do in return because there's no burn. That Calyrex just clinging on. My goodness, that is close. Wow. That's, that's that's not what Yuri wanted at all. That brutal swing. That, he really wanted that to be enough damage to be able to secure the knockout onto that Calyrex. Yeah, that, that Calyrex really needed to get there, I think. And this Calyrex, I mean, just does have to be careful. The Thunderous could still pick it up with a, a brutal swing, just following it up. It would kind of force a max guard out of the Solgaleo of Yuri, and maybe the Thunderous are just going to be going for it this turn, right? The, both the re restricted choices here have Dynamax. They are the focal point of this team right now. And the, it's up to what difference can your Thunderous make? Now, Yuri's Thunderous is definitely a little bit more supportive, has access to Eerie Impulses, Scary Faces, um, all of these supporting moves that we've seen on these Pokemon. Okay, that's great. But David is going to be doing a lot more damage. That's a Pokemon trained with four attacks. Thunderous gets to land that scary face, though, and that advantage that he had early on with the speed is just absolutely gone. That said, is Wild Charge enough? No! The boost from Steel Spike keeping it safe. Yeah, now Sogaleo can, can fire back another Max Steel Spike. It will clean up the Thunderous on David's side, and that does give Yuri a Pokemon advantage for now, but... Uh it what could get do? it could get a little bit harder that max steel spike boost once again sitting exactly where you want on this solgaleo the targets into the thunderous does get the knockout there so they both exchange their thunderous but most importantly going into the following turn scalarix is slower than the solgaleo yeah solgaleo is uh and the calyrex are not super healthy right now but nope. <laughs> it really depends on what's going to be 
the Pokemon that David and Yuri decide to reveal for this next turn. It's going to be Zacian now coming out for David and now Groudon as well being revealed for Yuri. I, it comes down to what these speeds look like. But well, a, a stiff breeze in either direction is going to be uh, probably taking out either of these Pokemon that is currently Dynamaxed. I mean, very low amounts of health. But the big thing is, what are you willing to give up to get there? That's the big thing. I mean, David has the Zashin, which is going to be the fastest thing around um, because it's not been caught by any scary faces. This Calyrex probably just easily going to get picked off. And that kind of puts the pressure on Zashin. Like, what do you want to deal with? Because you're going to be the only thing really putting in a shift this turn. Unless he decides to switch out the Calyrex, which obviously would give up his last turn of Dynamax. It is important to get that speed back, though. And I have mad respect for David for making this play. It's a tough, tough call. But you need that speedy advantage at the end. And to boot, you get an Intimidate down on the Groudon. Yep. That's going to be pretty important, and it might also just eat one of these last Dynamax turns coming in from the Sogaleo, especially if you're just going to protect the Zacian here. This is a great way for David to keep control of this game, as Zacian, yeah, it's going to be taking a, a lot through the Protect, but it's still going to put David in such a good position here, especially if you're not going to get knocked out because you dropped the attack on this Groudon. And Incineroar Ooh. just avoids the attack anyway. That's big. Incineroar is now in a great position. That switch in going completely unpunished for David Kutesh. Basically, this is exactly where he wants to be, right? He's now got his fake out user in Incineroar on the board. The Zacian is the fastest thing. So it's just all about where does he want to tidy up and how does he want to play through this game? Very smart from Yuri to get rid of the Solgaleo, saving what was the Dynamax focal point of your team for a little bit later. And most importantly, landing Intimidates with the Incineroar. That does mean, I think, if David goes after this Groudon, it's going to be a little bit harder to try and knock it out. Incineroar does throw the fake out into the Groudon, so maybe calling that switch. A Zacian throws out the Sacred Sword. That's a lot of damage down on Incineroar. Yeah, I mean, that was just the right call to make. You know, mm -hmm. this is the safest play for David. It looks like a really good read, but also it just played out that way. You know, maybe expecting that Incineroar could be in the back, but also just Sacred Sword being a really nice way to just clean up that Sol Galeo if that did stay on the field. Yep, it's uh, making sure that you get some damage down into that slot. Now the roles are reversed a little bit, though. Yuri is the one with access to his fake out Incineroar. He's going to be able to kind of drive a little bit here and, and use that next to one of his restricted Pokemon to try and, and push into an advantage here. So really needs to capitalize on this turn, I think, that the threat of the Shadow Rider Calyrex in the back is, is a big problem in my book, uh, just because it could it could maybe tidy up very, very quickly. Uh, this Solgaleo coming back in, don't forget, that Solgaleo sacrificed a whole lot of boosts to do that. Um, that had max Steel Spike boost that it, it decided to give up. It did. That said, the Calyrex just coming back into play, so both trainers uh, saved it last turn, but won it right back in. I... I Try to preserve as much as you can here. I, I think this is a really nice Ooh. safe play coming in from David as well. I think at this point you might be comfortable giving up the Shadow Rider Calyrex, knowing what's in the back. Yeah, yep. the Calyrex just, knocked out. And the Zashian didn't really have an opportunity to do anything. Uh, this does mean that you know David is down to his final two Pokemon, and Yuri still has uh, three remaining. One of them is that very, very low Solgaleo, though. Um, and the Solgaleo is in a tough position, right? You know that the Solgaleo likely doesn't have Trick Room. Uh, doesn't have Trick Room. Doesn't have Protect because it has Trick Room. So... If you think Yuri's looking to play that end game where, okay, he's going to be dealing with that, you just deal with the Solgaleo and hope your Zashin can deal comfortably with this, uh, you know, with this Groudon. Honestly, though, I think the Groudon on Yuri's side of the field could just win it for him. I don't see a good answer to it on David's side. Two Pokemon that are pretty weak to Precipice Blades. Mm -hmm. but, and also the fact that Yuri still has access to get rid of those Intimidate drops by being able to cycle back in his own Incineroar. And yep. David is stuck at this point with a Zacian that has taken a few Intimidate drops at the uh, Yeah, that's stuck on the board now with uh, lower health. The Solgaleo just getting dealt with here uh, quite nicely with the Sacred Sword. This Groudon gets to come back in for free. I think this one's going very much one directional now in the favor of Yuri. We'll obviously make sure it plays out as we expect. The Cinderor takes a little bit of damage. That said, I mean, the Zacian is capable of dealing huge damage, but it all has to be at the Groudon. 
if you mess up once, if this Groudon protects and you don't call it, um, you know, not likely um, that it has all of those abilities. If you know the item on it and you know the team, you, you've got to hit this so hard, though, in this turn. You know, the Groudon's going to probably be taking uh, Behemoth Blade. And then a follow-up from Incineroar. Zacian playing it safe. I quite like this, actually. Yeah, it just buys time for the fake-out, you know? Yep. But the fake-out goes into the opposing Incineroar. Groudon does go for the Precipice Blades, but... Oh, there's the berry. See the Shooka Berry get activated on David's Incineroar to try to soak up some of this damage, and that it does. And it does a good job of it, but that's kind of turn is, is null and void, right? As the Incineroar doesn't get to move. So yes, you get to stay around for this following turn, but you took a lot of damage for your troubles. Now it's all about dealing with the Groudon if you're David. It, if he gets the knockout, I think he wins the game. If he doesn't, he's in a, a lot of trouble. There's the Sacred Sword going into the Incineroar, leaving this Groudon alone to, to try and fire back. No, you're you're hoping for a Precipice Blades miss at that's, this point. That's got to be it. And it, it, gets it. it. Oh my goodness, the absolute curse of the commentator from that. Uh, just not getting there, but... There's still a lot of work for the Zashian to do into this Groudon. Yes. I still think that's fair to say. The Zashian still you're, has drops. You're still uh, you're still hoping for another Precipice Blades miss at this point, but th this is still buying you some valuable time. It's possible. <sighs> it's not over till it's over. It's not. The Zashian, though, don't forget, is sat there with a lowered attack stat. The be Behemoth Blade going into this. You've got to hope for a critical hit here, I think, if you're David to seal this one up. No. Oh, that's such Look at, little damage. Yeah, you can't leave, of course. No. Yeah. And the Bulldoze reveal as well. You can't leave your Zashin in just taking those special attack drops um, because, you know, it, it doesn't get the damage done when it, it's most needed. Smart by Yuri to pivot over to the Bulldoze, of course. Um, Zashian is still faster uh, as well, even with that speed drop. I think that's pretty valuable information. It needs a crit. It, uh, if it, and that's not yeah. the crit that you're going to need to clean up this game so, so bulldoze will be able to hit the zashian and yuri now tying up this series one to one really nicely done by yuri i think both trainers getting off to an awkward start but yuri saving the right things to last i don't know about david switching in that calyrex actually and, and just giving it up it was such an important part of the team what was he sort of expecting from the Groudon in that turn, where the Groudon went for the Precipice Blades and just caught it? Groudon is renowned for spread moves. It's known for Precipice Blades, Rock Slides, Bulldozers. Maybe, you know, maybe he was thinking the Fire Punch would go one direction, but no, you, that's a very risky switch in for the Calyrex Shadow Rider, and, and it just gets punished for it. So we're going to game three. We're going to a best of one to decide who advances to tomorrow. I think in that specific turn, David is really hoping that the sacrifice of the Calyrex is enough to be able to catch something important when the Incineroar comes back in with those Intimidate drops. But nothing got knocked out, so nothing stuck. Because he protected in the other slot. So, you know, the Zashin protecting fine but not when you're just switching it in. You know, you're not gonna get the ball position that you need from that, and I, I don't know if that's the most optimal play. Maybe thinking that there was gonna be, you know, a, ta a single target attack into the Zashin. Yeah. Maybe that's what he was looking for. Uh, but he didn't get it, and, and that caused a lot of problems. So it's coming right now. They're in team select once again. Game three on what is now a best of one single elimination match. This is what you wanted. I, I, this is what I wanted. I asked for it. You ask for it, and, and you shall receive a three-game set now where both of our players are at 6-2, looking for the final win of the day to secure themselves to go forward to the top 32 tomorrow. My question, I guess, is what options... They've, they've both run the same thing in both games, right? What options do they have to, to completely wildcard on their opponent? Uh, it's the Rillaboom and the Blastoise for David and the uh, Suicune and the Venusaur for Yuri. So it's actually a water type and a grass type for both of them. Um, a little bit different in how they play, but uh, certainly options that could mix it up. I wonder if we'll see the same leads as both trainers have got to win with that lead. So it kind of lends themselves to, to play to their advantage. It's Solgaleo Thunderous on one side and Black Blastoise, Calyrex. Okay. All right, so 
I like this change from David for one reason. It gives me more chance of seeing a, a G-Max Cannonade. Of course, that, that becomes a little bit more troublesome when you're, you're facing down a uh, Pokemon that can, can really hurt you for it. But I think it could be in a good position to set this up. That does mean your Blastoise is taking the Dynamax, your Calyrex is staying in its regular form, and you could maybe, I don't know, Will-O-Wisp something and, and see if you could get that, uh, that damage mitigated again because the Will-O-Wisp was really important in game number one. So it's time for Dynamax. We'll see where the Dynamax is going. Uh, I think, though, David is going to be Dynamaxing the Calyrex again, just based off uh, the Pokeball that it was in. Yep, it's going to be the Shadow Rider Calyrex. Sorry, you do not get to see <laughs> the Gigantamax Blastoise. But I actually think this works out really, really well in David's favor, especially if you're just able to get some really big damage out. I feel like the Thunderous is going to be the biggest issue, but also Yuri could just say, well, last time you handed over the weakness policy boost to me. Mm -hmm. Maybe that'll happen again, and maybe I can do something different with my Thunderous. Yep. I love the Sogolayers has been getting the weakness policy boost pretty much for free. The Thunderous could be stopped from giving it, but then you have to be careful with what you're attacking into it with. Blastoise Fake Out stops that Brutal Swing setup. I love this from David. This is definitely one of those plays that I really enjoy, and he's just going entirely after the Thunderous. Yeah, doesn't even want to give over the weakness policy boost to Yuri. That definitely helped out in that second game, and so not only does Calyrex at this point get the knockout, but it also gets that Grimnade boost. A big Max Lightning, though, onto the Blastoise, and it doesn't even knock it out here. Blastoise still going to stick around for another turn. And Blastoise, one of those Pokemon that can carry the Assault Vest and just hang on, turning those one-hit knockouts into two-hit knockouts. But David Kutesh did get rid of the Thunderous, and now, it, unless Yuri has you know a specific option to set up his own weakness policy, David may just be trying to leave this Sol Galeo with just its regular attack stat. There are options that it could set it up with. Bulldoze. Uh, Bulldoze is know. one. But is the Bulldoze going to be super safe? That's the, the big question. There it is. Um, and, and, you know, honestly, after the Grim Nay, is the Groudon even going to be allowed to, to do anything? That's a great question. Uh, this Grim Nay Calyrex could just say, you know what, Solgaleo, not worried about you, mate just going to keep wailing on your partners so you can never set it up and then I'll deal with you at the end. We'll see where it goes for it. The Sogaleo is waiting uh, with the Max Guard this turn and Calyrex Max Phantasm does wow. go for the Groudon. Does go for the Groudon here. It's not It's not going to get knocked out. That's a, nope. you know, taking that pretty handedly here. Um, but the Groudon does get a chance to go for the Bulldoze, but it's just going to be able to do some chip to the Blastoise. And, and that, the it knocks out the Blastoise. It does that, knock out the Blastoise. It maybe makes the Calyrex more manageable. Yeah, it also drops the speed. Yep, that important. that's big, because the Calyrex is just going first every every time right now, and it, at some point, we'll just be able to outspeed your Solgaleo and go absolutely crazy. Ooh, the Rillaboom! The adaptation has come through. This has been a double adaptation, actually, from David. Both the Pokémon he left in Games 1 and 2 coming to the fore here, and this Groudon isn't going to be able to bulldoze the Solgaleo, I do not think. So, uh, this is going to get real interesting real quick. That does mean that, you know, the Thunderous... Uh, you know, one of Thunderous Zashin and, or two of Thunderous Zashin and Incineroar has been left at home. It also gets really interesting when you take a look at the end game. Solgaleo did reveal Earthquake. Yep. In these previous games, and Grassy Terrain does lower the amount of damage that you will take from an Earthquake. But yep. Incineroar getting switched in here. Rillaboom going for a Protect. Just trying to buy some time through these final few turns of Dynamax here as another Max Phantasm into the Incineroar does take it to about half, but that does leave the Solgaleo available to do something here. And so now it's going to fire out with a Max Quake just to try to boost up those special defenses. It's not going to do a whole lot to that. Calyrex does not have the weakest policy activated, but that special defense boost might be pretty big. It's going to need the special defense boost because I can very much see a situation where it's left in front of this Calyrex in the late game. Um, that said, I mean, David's just been leaving the Solgaleo alone. He doesn't care. He's not letting it set up. This does get a little bit harder, of course, um, when we move to, uh, you know, non-Dynamax. You're not getting to Max Phantasm. And you've just got to be careful. The Incineroar now has access to Fake Out. The Rillaboom is going to be able to be slowed down in this turn. But the Rillaboom is really not the problem right now. I, I think the Calyrex Shadow Rider is still causing that conundrum. And without the Dynamax, his knockouts get a little easier to reach for. 
fake out as predicted into the Rillaboom and also Calyrex going for the Will-O-Wisp. It yep. will connect onto Yuri's Solgaleo. And now what little damage it was doing is going to be even smaller. But Solgaleo going for the Trick Room, changing the speeds around. Yep, no need in this one uh, to try and, and try and go first. You saw that the, the drop from Bulldoze wasn't enough. And now, you know, we've got that Trick Room set up. But the Solgaleo is in big trouble without its weakness policy boost. The Solgaleo is not going to be doing enough damage. Uh, the Rillaboom is going to be able to start just throwing down some damage soon. And that's uh, that's a big concern, I think, if, if you're in Yuri's shoes. But I love that he set up the Trick Room. I, I wasn't immediately thinking it was the the next choice play once the Dynamax was over. I think the Solgaleo needed to keep putting damage down. But getting itself set up nicely, Yuri could swing this very quickly just by attacking first a couple times. Yeah, there it is. Flare Blitz in the sun, huge damage. Yeah, that's absolutely big, especially because we didn't see a priority move get selected there from the Rillaboom. Who knows mm -hmm. what other move that that could have been as Solgaleo now gets to move next with a Sunsteel Strike, heading right into the Calyrex. Still doing a significant amount, but here comes the Astral Barrage. And this is kind of what Yuri is hoping for. Maybe that special defense boost being enough. Zero doesn't get knocked out here. And now the weakness policy finally activated on this Sogaleo. Yeah, the weakness policy really, really big there. Um, being able to make up for that burn a little bit as well. And that burn's not even going to start ticking down because of the grassy terrain that Rillaboom provided. So not even able to rely on that as an option to, to try and get the knockout. So it's going to be really, really tough for David here. One more turn of harsh sunlight as well. I think Yuri could capitalize on that very nicely with his Incineroar. That said, what David has last is going to be absolutely huge. It's going to be the Zashin, and that is not going to appreciate the trick room in the slightest no uh you know at this point i think yuri has a couple of options the sun is still up maybe you do take advantage of that maybe you read a protect here maybe you bring in the ground on the ground it's not looking super healthy either um but yeah here comes the protect from the zashin we've seen this before david just playing it a little bit safe as the incinerar goes for the flare blitz right into the protect from the zashin and now Sogaleo going for the Sunsteel Strike. At least it did choose the unprotected target. Yep, and that as well is, is now after the weakness policy boost. So Calyrex not able now. to deal with it. Yuri has taken complete advantage of the game in this trick room. Really, really nicely done. Waiting so long to get to that position. And, and now it, it's 3v1. I mean, the Zashin is good, but I don't know if it's this good. It's it's going to be a tight one. We've seen some big endgame Zashin uh, turns, but uh, it's uh, it's got a lot of work to do because of the trick room. Yeah, there's two more turns of Trick Room, mm -hmm. so that's going to be a lot for this Zashian to have to chew through. At least Grassy Terrain Healing will be over in one turn, but no, that's it. David doesn't want to reveal any more information. It's going to be Yuri taking yep. 